What if I told you that there's a way to do your literature review faster that doesn't end up taking months and actually lets you get started with your writing and submitting your paper much, much faster. We've tested it with over 460 plus clients at Academic English Now inside our published research program, allowing them to do exceptional literature reviews that their supervisors and journal reviewers actually enjoy reading. And in this video, I will show you how to leverage the power of AI to do an exceptional literature review in just four easy steps. This process allows you to find the right text, read them faster, structure your notes, and then write your paper much, much faster. But before I show you these four steps to doing a great literature review with AI faster, you need to know how to avoid getting your literature review flagged for plagiarism. Otherwise, all your hard work will go down the drain and you will also get into a lot of trouble. To make avoiding plagiarism easy, I'll give you three simple principles. First of all, did you know that some universities have banned using AI for research completely? So check your university guidelines and find out how and if AI can and cannot be used during your research process. And journals have such guidelines as well. The second thing is that some AI tools are known for hallucinating without eating mushrooms. This means that they invent fake information, fake references, and make inaccurate and false claims. ChatGPT is a prime example. So you always need to verify AI output and use the AI tools that I will recommend in this video. They are much more accurate than ChatGPT. And number three, never ever write entire text using AI. Use AI to brainstorm ideas, to structure your literature review, to improve your text, but not to write the whole text for you. Okay, so now that you know how to use AI without plagiarism, let me show you how you can do an exceptional literature review using AI following these four simple steps. First of all, do you feel over overwhelmed by how many texts you need to read for your literature review? Or maybe you actually can't find the relevant ones. Well, let me show you a fast and easy way of finding the most relevant text for your literature review. So you need to have too many and feel overwhelmed, nor too few and cannot get started. So what is that magic number of texts that you need to have for your literature review? Well, I will tell you in a second, but let me first walk you through the process of actually getting those texts. First of all, start by looking at the most recent papers. I don't recommend that you initially go any further than the last five years. And then you also need to set good exclusion criteria. The typical ones are the type of publication. For example, are you looking just at journal papers or also book chapters? The type of study, for example, are you just looking at randomized controlled trials? The methodology of studies that you will be including in your literature review, like qualitative or quantitative, where the study took place, in which region of the world, who or what was studied. In, in that study that you're going to be including or excluding in your literature review. But even if you do all of this, you'll still have hundreds and hundreds of papers to read. And reading all of them would take a very, very long time. So what you need to do is just scan the titles and the abstracts with the exclusion criteria in mind to quickly eliminate those papers that are not relevant to your literature review. And this should give you around 50 papers, which is the magic number of papers that you need to read for a really good literature review if you're doing a research paper. But how do you actually read them fast? If you've been reading the literature for months now, I'll show you a simple process that will 10x your reading with AI. But before I do, let me show you the biggest mistake most PhD students and researchers make when it comes to reading the literature. Unless you solve it, no AI tool on the planet will save your literature review. The other day I was talking to a client, let's call her Mary, who was doing um, her literature review. And she had so much to read and it was just taking forever. So I asked her why she was reading what she was reading. And her answer was that, well, it just came up in the search, so I had to read it. That meant Mary was reading the whole text without any clear purpose, which of course is very, very time consuming. 
So what you need to do instead is always ask yourself why you are reading. This will allow you to find the right information faster. For example, let's say you want to know what suggestions for future research other researchers have made in previous papers. So what you need to do is look at the discussion or the conclusion section of that paper that you're reading because the suggestions for future research will be there. And you never want to read the whole paper. I honestly don't know a single researcher who does it. And of course, you could do it even faster with AI. Here's how. So there are two tools that I would recommend that will really 10x your reading speed. And the first of them is SciSpace. The link to sign up on SciSpace is in the description. It's a free tool to get started with. Um, and then depending on how often you use it, they also have paid plans that you can check out. But how can you 10x your reading with SciSpace? Well, first of all, you have two options. You can either upload PDF text or get SciSpace to find them. If we get SciSpace to find them, um, you can type in a question or a relevant search query, and then you will get information on those papers that is summarized into different columns. And you can also tweak those columns in here and you can add whatever it is that you're looking for. That's why I mentioned that it's so important that you know why you're reading that paper, because Obviously, this is still a lot of information to process. So you want to be very clinical with it. Maybe you're just interested to see, you know, what were, what were the dependent variables of these studies? Well, you add this as a column and then you could potentially delete all the other columns. And then you've got a summary here. So this speeds up the reading tremendously. What you can also do is chat with individual um, documents in here. So when you click on a document with, like that, you can chat with this paper and you've got um, this sample questions here. So again, it's really important to understand why you're reading this paper. Is it to find the gap? Is it to find the contributions? Is it to know what data set was used or something else? So always think about the why. So for example, let's say we are interested in the contributions of that paper. So we can just click here and then SciSpace will give us those contributions. And you've got them here, okay? Divided into nice bullet points. What you can also do is then dive a little bit deeper and ask more specific questions that are suggested by SciSpace. So that's one way when you've got text that you look up using SciSpace, but you can also upload your text to your library in here. And once you've uploaded them, you can either chat with one document or you can chat with all of the files um, in here. So if I was to select all of them, apart from the notebooks, which um, is written work, um, I can chat with them. So I can go to Ask Copilot and I can ask Copilot questions in here about these um, papers, all of them. Or I can also open one paper and then do the same that we've just that I've just shown you um, in here and answer ask SciSpace questions. Another great tool that will help you to really speed up your reading is AvidNote. And in fact, AvidNote can do so much more than just your literature review. So you could consider using AvidNote as your only go-to um, AI research tool for the whole research process. But in terms of the literature review, in here what you need to do is actually upload papers to the library. So you cannot find papers um, with um, AvidNote, but the advantage is that if you upload PDFs, then actually AvidNote reads those PDFs and you're 100% sure that the information that it provides you is accurate because again, it's reading those PDFs. So once you've uploaded it, um, AvidNote will suggest um, questions um, that, you can, that you can ask. Okay? So if you click on chat with document, you'll have lots of different questions in here. What I particularly like about it is just that apart from generic AI questions that are very similar um, in SciSpace as well, you can ask specific questions that are specific to this particular um, document. Uh, for example, how many language teachers were included in Trent's study in 2012? So what AvidNote has done, it, it has already read the paper for you and it actually prepared relevant questions. But again, always think about that pyramid apex and your why so that you can ask the right questions and find the right information faster. So now that you've read the literature, how do you structure your literature review? 
If you've been staring at a blank page for ages, I will show you a simple hack that will allow you to structure your entire literature review today. And it's got everything to do with pyramids. Think of the pyramid apex as the final destination. In order to get there, you need to build the rest of the pyramid correctly. If you don't, the whole structure will collapse, just like this pyramid. So what you need to do first is define the pyramid apex. What are you going to tell the reader? What is your key takeaway message? So what? And then you build the pyramid steps from general to specific. So in a literature review, the pyramid apex is typically your aim, the aim of your study. And then the pyramid steps will be, will be the main topics that you need to cover in order to take the reader logically to that aim. So take the aim of your study and underline the key words, the key topics in that aim, and then put them in order from general to specific. These will become the main sections of your literature review. And then take one of these topics and ask yourself what specific information, what other subtopics do I need to discuss in order to take the reader to that main topic and then list them and then order them from general to specific. These will become the subsections of your literature review. Then for each subtopic, list several examples and facts from the literature. These will be your paragraphs or your sentences within each subsection. And of course, you could do it way faster with AI. This is how. So I'll show you two AI tools that can allow you to quickly structure your literature review. The first of them is SciSpace that we've already seen. So you need to go to the AI writer in SciSpace and then click on start writing. And the link to sign up on SciSpace for free is right below this video. Now it will open um, a document for you. And what you need to do is click on AI writer and click on outline builder. And then what you need to do is give SciSpace a prompt. And I already have a prompt in here that I'm just going to, uh, to paste, okay? Uh, but the prompt should include the f information such as, you know, what is the thing that you're writing? Like, um, is it a research paper or a PhD thesis chapter or maybe a review paper? And then you also need to give the aim of that paper and you want to be as specific as possible. So what is the aim of the paper you're writing or of the literature review of your PhD thesis? And then you should also give SciSpace how long that literature review should be because obviously that will determine the outline as well. So I'll put that here and then I'll click um, enter. And then SciSpace has uh, prepared an outline um, in here. So you can see that very quickly we get a pretty decent outline, uh, to be honest. It really includes everything that should be in the literature review and it's also nicely structured from the general to specific. What it lacks, of course, is the details. Okay, so for example, um, the first section is the introduction to um, native speakerism in language education. So what I could do next is actually ask um, SciSpace to generate a paragraph about native speakerism. For example, I could ask um, SciSpace um, about the definition in here um, of, um, of native speakerism to continue writing. So that's one way. The next tool that is really, really good is Jenny. Jenny is just a writing tool. I say just, but it's a fantastic AI writing tool, but it doesn't have all the literature review features that SciSpace has. So the link to sign up for Jenny is in the description and Jenny is also free to start with and then depending on how much you use it, you might need to sign up on one of their paid plans. And when you start a new document, um, first of all, it will ask you what you're writing about. So again, you wanna give it as much information as possible. Uh, the more information you give it, the better. And then to generate an outline, you need to decide, you know, whether you want no outline, but of course we don't want that. Whether you want standard headings. This standard headings is useful if you're writing an entire research paper because you will get headings, you know, like introduction, results, and so on. But for our purposes, creative headings are important because we're just writing the literature review section of the research paper and we want headings on that specific section. So we're going to click on start writing and get Jenny to generate that document. So uh, Jenny doesn't automatically generate the outline. What you actually need to do is go to, uh, go to the chat uh, box, ask Jenny, and then 
put the prompt in here that, that, um, that we had before, okay, to generate an outline for this particular literature review and then send it to Jenny. And that's how we're going to uh, generate um, an outline. And this is way more detailed than SciSpace, as you can see, because apart from the big headings, it also gives you more specific topics straight away. And it tells you how much time you should spend on each specific topic. And then it also gives you references. So for me, it gives me references because I've already uploaded some references as well, but it's also pulling references from um, its databases online. So this is so much more detailed than what SciSpace gave us. And the great thing as well is that then you can start expanding on these topics um, in here and ask Jenny further questions to continue generating the literature review. So I'm just going to add it to the document right here. Now that you've got the structure of your literature review, you need to write it. If this scares you or feels overwhelming, I'll show you a simple way to use AI to write your literature review. But first, let me show you what's the biggest mistake that PhD students and researchers make when it comes to writing the literature review. And it's got everything to do with waffles like this delicious Belgian waffle. It's delicious, but it's also full of calories and really low in nutrients. You see, that's what most literature reviews are. They are full of words, i.e. calories, but low on content, i.e. nutrients. And this is called waffling. To waffle basically means to speak or write, especially at great length, without saying anything important or useful. So what do you do instead of waffling? Well, you need to create a coherent and critical argument in your literature review. But how do you do that, Marek? Well, the easiest way is to come back and think about your pyramid apex that we introduced a couple of minutes ago. When you write the literature review, always ask yourself, so what? What is the main point that I'm trying to make? What is the key takeaway message that I want the reader to walk away from this section, subsection, or paragraph? and then cut out any unnecessary words. And you can do that with AI as well. This is how. So as we said, it's really important to avoid waffling in your literature review. So now that you've written something in SciSpace or in Jenny, I'll just uh, paste a text that, um, that I've written. What you can get uh, the software to do, if you select the text and click on AI Writer, you can actually um, summarize it okay or simplify it so if i click on summarize jenny is going to cut it and if i like it or well, I'm, I'm just going to insert it below just to see what it looks like so it really cut out a lot of um, sentences and it made the text much shorter so that's one way in which you can use ai to make your literature review more to the point and avoid waffling and Jenny will do the same thing for you. So um, I will put the, um, the text that I just generated in here again. Okay, and I'll paste it here. And then I'm going to select it and then go to AI commands. And in here, um, you want to uh, summarize it as well. So it's the same command. Okay, and then you could replace the section. Now, what you can also do, and is what is very important in a literature review, is to create a critical, coherent argument where you acknowledge other points of views. So you can use AI's help to do it as well, because when you select this, AI can help you to write the opposing arguments. When you click on that, AI is going to generate some ideas. Now, please bear in mind that you have to verif verify AI's output uh, using your own researcher's knowledge. And it also doesn't give you the references in here. So of course you will need to um, cite, uh, but most importantly, you need to verify it. And you could do something very, very similar here uh, with Jenny. If you go to AI commands and then um, write opposing argument, Jenny can also do that for you. Now that you know how to do an exceptional literature review, you might want to publish it as a review paper. This is a fantastic way to boost your citations and become a go-to authority in your field. But how do you actually do that? And how do you develop a system to publish three or more papers every single year without journal rejections? Well, in this video, I discuss precisely such a system that we've tested with over 460 PhD students and researchers inside our 
Power Publish Researcher program. And I guarantee that it will help you as well to publish your papers in better journals regularly without journal rejection. So watch this video next.